If you follow my channel, you know I do a lot of watch reviews and commentaries on the state of the watch market. But today, I want to talk about why I don't wear this watch anymore. Why I don't wear my Rolex Daytona anymore. It's not even that I just don't wear it out of the house. <laughs> like, I just don't wear this watch anymore. It's weird. It's not a place I thought I'd ever be with this watch. So I used to wear my Rolex Daytona a lot. It was honestly one of my daily wear kind of watches. I just thought it looked so badass. I thought it was such a cool watch. And it's a watch I never thought I'd own. I, I truly never thought in a million years I'd be offered a Rolex Daytona at retail. And God knows, I was not paying over retail. <laughs> but I had an experience recently. And I don't know. I haven't been able to shake like my feelings away from this experience. And I thought I was gonna get attacked over my Daytona. Also, when I'm sharing this, if it looks like I'm laughing and smirking, it's not because I think it's hilarious. I just don't know how to act in serious situations. <laughs> so. I don't know, I think I could be overreacting, but this whole experience has really put me off of wearing a watch that I love. So I was wearing my Daytona at a local shop. It was a B&M, okay? <laughs> if you're British, you already know what B&M is. If you're Canadian, think Zellers, but a really, really ropey Zellers. Like Zellers located in the worst part of Sudbury or something. <laughs> and if you're American, I don't even know what the equivalent would be. I don't know, think of a crap shop that sells a lot of everything for cheap but not not walmart not quite walmart this isn't the point of the story anyways okay i was walking around bnm and wearing my daytona but i wasn't wearing it in a like ooh, ooh look at me kind of way where it's like out so everyone can see it it was under a jacket cuff but as i was reaching for something it kind of just slightly exposed my watch and i saw a guy like clock my watch he clocked it. He, he looked at it and was like, but I didn't want to jump to conclusions. Like I'm a watch geek. I clock people's watches all the time and get excited about it. But then this guy starts following me. Um, and it's not super obvious or anything. It's just, I'm noticing every aisle I turn down and everywhere I look, this guy just seems to be. So I thought, let's go down a weird one. Let's go down a weird aisle somewhere where it'd be strange for him to be like the ladies razor aisle or something. And still, he's following me. I start thinking like, okay, fuck. I'm a smaller female. Yeah, I'm not the daintiest thing that's ever existed, but, but still like, how do I get out of this? Cause this guy could beat me up, no problem. So I went to the checkout, he's still following me. Um, so I think, oh, I'm gonna pretend I forgot something. This is the final test. I'll pretend I forgot something. We'll leave the checkout aisle see if this guy's still following me. So I leave the line and I come back after a few minutes and I realize this guy's kind of lurking around the exit. So he's lurking between the checkout and where you exit. And you know, I grew up in small town Canada. I grew up in a really trusting community in a place where people don't lock their doors at night and nothing happens. It's a real like salt of the earth community. But since moving to Bristol, I've kind of had to toughen up a little bit which sucks because i kind of love sweet naive trusting britney <laughs> and it feels messed up to say but as i saw him lurking around the front um i don't think i would have done much damage or anything but i remember reaching into my bag and just kind of putting my keys in my hand in case i had to like punch him and try to get away as fast as i could now i have a plan <laughs> I don't know, I don't think I would do much damage, <laughs> but I, I didn't want to just be a sitting duck and have someone steal my watch. This is what happens, my people, as well. This is what happens when you go to B&M, all right? Guys, stay away. But I leave the store, giving him, like, as wide of a berth as I can, trying to just stay <laughs> as physically far away from him as I could. And then I just ran into another shop, a shop where he had absolutely no business being. And I thought, there's no way he follows me in here. Um, and I thought, I, I think by me running away, probably signaled to him like, oh, she's on to this. She knows 
I don't know. Maybe it was nothing, but I felt deeply uncomfortable, ran to another store and I thought, okay, if he follows me in here, I think I'm gonna have to tell the store manager or something. I'm gonna have to tell someone I don't feel safe and see if they help me somehow leave okay. Um, but I look around, he's not following me anymore. Um, he doesn't seem to be lurking around out front, but I think, I just don't know. I'm gonna jog home. So I s jog, I, I sprint home. <laughs> as fast as I can. Um, he was gone at this point though. I, I didn't see him anywhere. Yeah. But that whole thing, and it could be nothing. It could be me reading into a situation that wasn't there, but that whole thing has really put me off of wearing my Daytona again. I really don't feel comfortable wearing it outside the house anymore. And I always just think, okay, if that was kind of the situation that I thought it was, I'm quite lucky that it went like that, but that's only the first time. Is it gonna play out like that the second time or is something much worse gonna happen to me? Is it gonna play out like that? I don't know. The whole ordeal could have had a much worse ending than it did. And I don't want this to become a Paul Thorpe video. Well, welcome back watch people. Paul, I love you, but this is watch crime. This is all very on brand for Paul and not really my thing as much. But I just thought it was important that I share that this happened to me. Um, and this happened in a city that's much safer for this kinds of stuff. I always thought watch crime, people getting robbed for watches, that's a London thing. That's not really a Bristol thing. But the fact that maybe this stuff is just starting in Bristol, that's really telling. On the one hand, it's sad. The Daytona was a watch I used to really enjoy wearing. And it meant a lot to me. It really was a watch that meant a lot to me. It represented a place I never thought I'd be, you know? And now I just don't want to wear it anymore. And you might be sitting there watching this thinking, ah, oh, you know, Brit, just wear it. The odds of this happening again, you know, just wear it. But I think if you're a smaller female, <laughs> you'd feel a little bit different. So on the one hand, it's sad. And on the other hand, I think stuff like this is only going to keep happening more and more in the UK. As the financial situation just kind of gets more bleak here, I think we're going to see crime like this go up. And on the other hand as well, James is pretty happy about it. Um, he's really happily been wearing my Daytona. I guess it's kind of his Daytona now more. I don't know. I don't want to say that yet. Hold on. I might be feeling all right in a couple months time and want to get it sized to me again. Yeah, it doesn't even fit me anymore. It's fully sized to James because he's been wearing it so much. <laughs> but on the whole, it just makes me sad. I feel sad. And I haven't sold this watch. Goldsmiths, Goldsmiths, if you're watching, I've not sold my Daytona. If you're thinking, bitch, like, why aren't you wearing that watch we got you anymore? Um, <laughs> I just don't feel safe. <laughs> And it is such an identifiable watch as well. It's an amazing watch. I still love it. And I'm hoping this video isn't too like, ooh, ooh, scary times. Everyone be scared. Because I'm not meaning to make it seem like this at all. But for me, it's just been quite eye-opening. And it's going to be something I factor into my life when I choose my watches that I'm going to wear for my day. And this is why, my people, Casio is king. You won't ever have these problems in an F91W. <laughs> Ah, this video feels too glum. I'm gonna end this video with adorable dogs. More of the usual Gringa content is coming soon. Don't forget to do all that YouTube stuff. Like, comment, subscribe. And until next time, you beautiful, gorgeous, fabulous watch nerds. Bye. I also need to take a minute to thank all my wonderful patrons who give me money. So my channel can keep going and hopefully be awesome. Thank you, patrons. Pope tier, Pope to patrons. Yeah.